You might be familiar with the term living off the land. That is when a hacker or threat actor or adversary lands in a new environment. They've gained initial access to the target that they're wanting to compromise, but they don't bring in any of their own tooling. They don't bring in any programs or scripts or things that they might use to do damage and accomplish their objectives. They live off the land and only use resources or applications or programs or scripts or tools that are already a part of this environment that they're now a part of. They're only using things that are native or inherent or built in to the target operating system that they might be up against, whether that is Windows or Linux. In this video, we're going to take a look at how some security researchers might track down some of these living off the land binaries or scripts and tools and techniques that could be used to do something different or new other than what was expected that could still accomplish some task that a threat actor, hacker, adversary might want to do. But before we dive in, I would like to give some quick shout out to today's sponsor. FlexTrack is the premier cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform that makes penetration testers, red teamers, and cybersecurity teams more efficient, effective, and proactive. With FlexTrack, you can eliminate the dull and boring drudgery of report writing, so you can focus on what's really important. Hacking. The engagement, the assessment, and the campaign. And it's not just for offense. FlexTrack is a collaboration portal between both red and blue teams to facilitate effective purple teaming and faster remediation. While coordinating between multiple team members, you easily aggregate findings, pull in reusable content from write-up databases and content libraries, and track and measure progress in real time. You can import assets from common CSV files, Nmap, Nessus, and many of your other favorite tools. FlexTrack boasts 25 plus integrations, and that list is always growing. You can do even more with FlexTrack's runbooks, with scripts mapped to the Mitre attack framework or plans from Atomic Red Team and Scythe, or assessments built off of the CIS controls and benchmarks. And of course, show the impact with FlexTrack's analytics and visualizations. Customize your reports with your team's logo and details, and with a single click, export your report and send it off to the client. Spend more time hacking and less time reporting. Learn how you can boost your team's efficiency by 30% and cut reporting time by up to 65% with PlexTrack. Seriously, check them out. I have great colleagues and peers that use PlexTrack every day for reporting. Sign up for a demo and claim your free month of PlexTrack right now at httpsjh.io slash PlexTrack. Huge thanks to PlexTrack for sponsoring this video. Okay, so now we are diving into the fun stuff we're here on my computer screen, and you are probably already aware of some online resources like GTFO bins, or other ones that lol bins or lol bass, again, living off the land, binaries, scripts, and libraries, GTFO bins being strictly for Linux or Unix binaries that, again, are all present on a target operating system that is traditionally running Linux or a Unix ecosystem, right? But if you're looking for Windows binaries, you would want to visit Lolbass, this other resource, again, specifically for the Windows operating system. Now, again, this is a very, very well-known resource, but I will have to admit, hey, you know, there might be some cool, sweet stuff that isn't always going to end up being included in these resources. And with that, I would honestly give some credit and kudos to the great folks over on InfoSec Twitter. Now, I know there are a lot of recent conversations between, oh, Twitter and Mastodon and other social media sites, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but ultimately, what I want to be getting towards is the security community, right, is still alive and well and booming and sharing great work and resources and research. And with that, I want to give credit and kudos and shine the spotlight on some incredible folks like Gregores Torek. And forgive me, I might be <laughs> getting your name wrong, my friend. Um, but hey, I did want to showcase some of the sweet work that he's done and bring it to light with this video with a little bit of a showcase on living off the land binaries and some interesting tricks that you might be able to do. I did ask for permission. I I did want to make sure, hey, is all this above board? Are you totally comfortable with me sharing and showcasing it? But he says, absolutely, without a doubt. That's the reason that we make all this education freely accessible. So thank you for being a champion of that initiative and effort here. 
So now let's really get the party started. I am inside of a flat, vanilla, bare bones installation of Windows 11 inside of a virtual machine, and I want to showcase some other interesting stuff that we might be able to get into. I'm going to open up the terminal. Windows terminal is one of the sweet new ways to access the command prompt or PowerShell, and I have this window open right here. You might notice on the desktop I do have uh, Proc EXP64 and Procmon64. These are some utilities from the Sys internal suite that I will get into in just a little bit, but I want to set the stage with what we're going to be playing with. Uh, so I'm going to full screen this terminal here, and I'm going to open up this program, tpmtool.exe. That is the name of the command that we'll end up running here. And tpmtool is, as you might expect, the utility that can be used to get information about the TPM or the trusted platform module. Now, if you want to look at some up-to-date information, you could check out this online with some of the resources on the official Microsoft documentation. But Ultimately, this is what we'll end up kind of playing with and exploring. Uh, you might be able to do some interesting stuff with this. If you wanted to, you could actually kind of trace or see and understand, okay, what are each of these different parameters going to end up doing when this program actually executes? If you were to supply any of these arguments, what might you be able to see that this program actually does? And things that you might not expect, right? This is why you would use some of the utilities like Procmon or Process Explorer, so you can do a little bit more security research just to see, does anything weird happen? Does anything out of the ordinary happen? Bear in mind, this TPM tool is, again, native and inherent to Windows. Uh, I got to track down where this thing is actually stored, because I think that would be worthwhile to show you. Let me go to the C drive and search for tpmtool.exe in the search bar. And there it is. I got a result here. Uh, it is in WinSXS on WoW64 Windows TPM blah, blah, blah. Uh, but that is inherently, hey, something that we could access as part of the path, uh, and we can just kick it off through the command line. So nice and easy for us. And by the way, I'm sorry, I probably didn't do a very good job of like setting the stage here. Say that we are a threat actor or a hacker or adversary now that has gained initial access and we are inside of this Windows environment. I know there's a little bit of suspended disbelief there, but please bear with me. It'll be kind of fun for the showcase here. And alongside that uh, suspended disbelief, I would like to kind of zoom in on one of the more interesting things that this thing might do. When we end up using TPM tool driver tracing, it has options there to either start or stop the driver tracing functionality. You can see that as part of the output. Look, we just start or stop collecting driver traces as in the help output here. So if I were to run that, let me do that, tpmtool.exe, driver tracing, obviously this will need an argument and that's why it says, hey, you know, hey, go ahead and fill this out. The parameter is incorrect. We have not supplied everything that we need. So if I were to try and use tpm driver tracing stop, it says, oh, there was an error. The data collector set was not found. Data collector set was not found. Okay, hey, whatever. Again, bear with me, say we were going through the process of exploring each of these parameters and each of these arguments or seeing what this program might do. But the way that we actually kind of trace that is by taking a look at Procmon or checking out what this process does as we execute it. Now again, Procmon is part of the Sys internal suite uh, and Procmon will just dump like a little bit of a fire hose all of the events that are caused by different processes running on your computer, whether it opens a registry file or if it actually creates a new file or opens a file handle on your file system and whether or not it succeeds or if it fails or anything like that, you might be able to find some interesting DLL hijacking opportunities. You might be able to find some odd, oh, maybe using the current user registry key rather than the local machine. All these different things that could open the door for you to maybe get in the middle of some strange execution of what a program might actually do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually use process monitor and set a filter. That's what this little filter icon is up here. And if I go ahead and say, look, I want to zoom in on and specifically focus on what this TPM tool process might do. We can say, hey, the process name will be set when it is tpmtool.exe, then we want to include all of those outputs. We don't want to see all the other stuff that happens on the computer. We just want to look at strictly the process name is tpmtool.exe. So include that, but exclude everything else. 
If I hit apply here, initializes and now all of that activity is gone. But if I bring this to the side and I fire up my little terminal over here, if I run the exact same command, TPM tool driver tracing stop, if I hit enter, boom, you can see all of this gets filled out. Now I know a whole lot of this is gonna be probably pretty dull and they're boring and you just sort of hit the I believe button, but look for the weird stuff that just seems a little bit out of the ordinary. Hey, okay, loading DLLs, that's probably pretty normal. Hey, checking different registry keys to see what's going on, yada, yada, yada. Maybe getting any necessary DLLs or dynamic link libraries. But there is one oddball that if you wanted to look for, hmm, are there any paths that maybe we could control? Or is it using any current user configurations within the registry? This is where you would really be looking for things that you might be able to see spawn or do something different that could be be taken advantage of for a living off the land technique or trick. And here's a weird one. The TPM tool.exe actually runs process create to spawn cmd.exe, like the command prompt itself. But that's weird because we used cmd.exe to start TPM tool, right? So why is it creating another sub process or another child process of cmd.exe? Could we maybe take a closer look at what is happening with cmd.exe just as well? What if we modified our filter to actually add in, hey, let's check out what cmd.exe is up to. When the process name is cmd.exe, include that just as well. Now this might get a little bit messy because we're probably gonna end up seeing oh, some of our own activity trying to spawn TPM tool, but no, okay, we didn't because it's all under Windows Terminal. But can I go see what happens after we create cmd.exe as a sub processor, as a child under TPM tool? Let's see, there it is. Process create cmd.exe. Now we have two new entries here that cmd.exe is trying to do something odd. It has a process start with like no path supplied and then a thread create. Kind of weird. Uh, scrolling down, do we see any other entries? Okay, load image, etc., etc., etc. More registry configuration stuff all underneath maybe our TPM tool. And then probably, okay, thread exit, process exit, it's cleaning itself up. But what did it try to start as another process to open? When we saw process create, we also see a process start here. And if I check out the properties on this, I'm gonna right click it. Ooh, you can see all the info here in the command line. It uses cmd.exe and then slash c as an argument to run a new command with logman.exe, uh, is logman.exe a thing? It uses stop TPM trace, tack ETS. So if I go back to my terminal, can I run logman.exe? Oh, seemingly I can, but some of you might be catching on to this weird oddity here and that cmd.exe slash c logman.exe is not specifying a full path for logman.exe. So what if we had our own logman.exe present in this directory in the execution of what we were trying to run here? Now I know this is really weird because we're kind of using TPM tool with some oddball syntax that we just kind of arbitrarily chose, but you know, we dug around and we found it. And if it were to have its own logman.exe in this directory, rather than the regular Windows path, it would end up executing it, right? Do you get that idea? Here, let's try it out. Let's go ahead and copy a C Windows System 32 calc.exe. Is that here? Calc.exe, we'll put it in this directory, right? So now it's in this directory. I have a calc.exe present here, but remember the name of this executable needs to be logman.exe, right? So let's see if I can move that calc.exe to logman.exe. Checking out the directory again, there it is. So this is weird. 
what if we were to end up using our TPM tool.exe driver tracing stop syntax to have this application, this built in native inherent tool, spawn cmd.exe and then spawn logman all within the current directory. And we're supplying our own little hijacked logman, which could be anything. It pops calc. <laughs> Silly, dumb, weird, uh, but there is our own sort of proxied code execution uh, to run something that it didn't intend to really do. And it could be any art executable. Like you could make this notepad, you could make this malware.exe, you can make this ransomware. Obviously you or the threat actor or hacker having the opportunity to be able to place the contents of the file there, that is its own potential liability and there are variables and things at play there. But if you have that access or you could write to a file in that location in a stealthy enough way, you're not inherently executing that file. You're now kind of maybe sneaking around some potential detection opportunities that blue teams or defenders or folks trying to protect this environment. Hey, they won't really latch on to this weird TPM tool execution. And that is exactly the point of using these living off the land binary tricks. And that is why you, if you're super interested in this stuff, might be able to just explore, hey, different Windows binaries or different native uh, applications and things that could be present on your operating system and just see what weird stuff they do tracing through with, with Process Monitor or Process Explorer and just kind of seeing what happens and why. But hey, again, huge shout out and credit and kudos to Gerzeglor's Torek. Forgive me, I always worry about getting your name right. Og tweet over on Twitter. He, he originally kind of showcased this. He says, you know what? I love the smell of low bins or living off the land binaries in the morning. Here's using TPM tool to spawn CMD, to spawn Logman. And hey, what an oddball, what a surprise. Logman is going to end up being launched from the current folder. So he showcases this little picture where he triggers his own pwned executable uh, and, and then ends up showcasing, hey, in the event log, even seeing this with Sysmon, this is what ends up being showcased for uh, this executable here. Uh, checking out in the event log or seeing things triggered and fired with Sysmon is another great way to see, hey, what happens where and when? Maybe a little bit faster than going in and out of Procmon back and forth, but uh, hey, uh, all different ways to see what happens in what weird stuff could we track down for some of these living off the land techniques. And if at the end of this all you're asking, so what? Like, why bother? Like, what make, what, what's the difference between running the application that you intended on running, whether it was calc or notepad or malware or ransomware or whatever, why not just invoke it? Uh, again, you could just kind of be redirecting or proxying your own command execution to just not look like what you're actually doing. It's just sort of masquerading and kind of hiding, or at least again, redirecting the attention of the analysts and the, you know, sock watch floor folks digging into seeing what's really happening here, because then you as the attacker, as the red teamer, as the penetration tester or anything have more time to do more damage. If that's really the way that we want to put it there. <laughs> With that said, I hope this is an interesting trick. I hope it's a neat little technique, a little tactic you might be able to put in your toolkit. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. And maybe if you're doing some of that red teaming, hey, ethical hacking, pen testing stuff, you're firing up Plex Track, you're using our sweet sponsor, and you're enjoying videos just like these. If you are, please do those YouTube algorithm things to help the channel grow. Like the video, comment, subscribe. If you'd be so kind, there are donation links. If you're interested in Patreon and PayPal in the description. Also, you can join the channel as a member and that helps kind of, hey, offer some financial funds to help keep me motivated and encouraged to keep doing more stuff just like this. So uh, super appreciate all of your generosity and a special credit and kudos again to uh, OgTweet and the great folks online that share great research and help us like help bolster the community. We truly stand on the shoulders of giants and it takes a village to kind of help keep this thing moving forward. So uh, <laughs> with that, I'll close out the video here, but thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.